By now, we should know just how useful it is to be able to expand a function in mathematics and physics. In a previous video, I covered Taylor's theorem for complex functions. In that, we saw problems arise, meaning we could not use Taylor's theorem if our function is not analytic in a specific point in our domain. Luckily, there is a way to still expand that function. This is complex analysis by a physicist, and today we're going to be going over Laurent's theorem. So this is Laurent's theorem, as you might see it in a bunch of different complex analysis textbooks. You may even be introduced to Laurent's theorem like this, where we have these two big, nasty-looking power series right here. One of these is starting with an index at 0, and another one is starting with an index at 1. And then we also have these two coefficients in here with these nasty integrals. And... Most of you might only learn this form of Laurent's theorem, but I do not want you to use this form of Laurent's theorem because the problem is it is overly complicated. We can simplify this down into a much simpler form for Laurent's theorem, and I don't even want to introduce Laurent's theorem or explain Laurent's theorem to you with this way. If you want to see how I can simplify this down, let me know in the comments and I'll do a separate video on that. But here is a better or easier form of Laurent's theorem. Laurent's theorem tells us that for our, if our function is analytic on some annular domain where R1 is less than R2, then we can use the following here to expand our function with these CN coefficients being represented by this integral. So we never really calculate these CNs, just like we never really calculated the ANs with the Taylor's theorem, okay? Instead, we manipulate known Maclaurin or Taylor series and then just re-specify our domain. And this is best seen in a handful of examples. In our first example here, we have sine Z per Z, which is actually just a sinc function. But we can pretty clearly see here that uh, when z is equal to zero, we have a singularity. You know, this is this creates a big problem for this function, and so because of that, we cannot use Taylor's theorem. But everywhere else outside of z equals zero, we can use Laurent's theorem. So we can specify the annular region of mod z greater than zero. We're going to do a Maclaurin series for this, so z0 is zero, zero, and uh, to infinity. And now, with this specified domain, we can expand this function. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pull out our one on z, and we're just going to expand our sign out, which is going to be z minus z cubed on the three factorial plus z to the fifth on five factorial minus z to the seventh on seven factorial and so on and so forth. And Laurent series or these series that we know of here that we can expand, well, we know that we can add to them, multiply to them term by term, uh, subtract and divide by them term by term. So let's do that with this 1 on z. With that, we're going to get a 1 minus z squared on 3 factorial plus z to the 4th on 5 factorial minus z to the 6th on 7 factorial and so on and so forth. And we can actually rewrite this in a condensed form, just like that. And this is still going to be true on our domain up here. But you might take a look at our series and say, hey, there are no z's in the denominator anymore. And technically, we can say that for this Laurent series expansion, that now, this works 
for all z in c in the complex plane. Now, this gets a little bit complicated, and if you go into higher levels of complex analysis, you may come across some issues. But technically, both of these domains are correct, and that might be a little bit confusing to you. And so I will just say this, that as a physicist, oftentimes we don't really specify the domains, and uh, that becomes a problem sometimes. But I will say this, when we're referring to the function, we should use this domain. And when we're referring to the expanded series, we can refer to this domain. Technically, you could refer to both of these, but it gets a little bit tricky and a little bit finicky. I don't particularly want to get into all of that math, and because this is complex analysis by a physicist, just follow my guidelines of use this domain, or when using this, when referring to this function, use this domain, and referring to this function, or the expanded form of the function, refer to this domain, or you could refer to that domain. In our second example here, we have e to the one per z, and you're gonna find this example actually all over the internet and in a bunch of complex analysis textbooks because it is so useful. Obviously, again, for z equals zero, we have a problem with this function. And based on that, we cannot apply Taylor's theorem to it. So we have to use Laurent's theorem, again, for the same domain as last time, mod z greater than zero, but less than uh, infinity, not r. And just like with uh, Taylor's theorem, and just like with before, we can use a known power series, which is e to the z, which is going to be 1 plus z plus z squared on 2 factorial, plus so on and so forth. And we can just substitute our 1 on z in everywhere where there's z. So we can go ahead and we can say that e to the 1 per z is equal to 1 plus 1 per z plus 1 per 2 factorial z squared plus 1 per 3 factorial z cubed and so on and so forth. And this can actually be rewritten and simplified with the following. And with this, notice that we're with this n being in the denominator, we're going to have negative powers of n. And that's really where the simplified form makes things a lot easier. Going back to the simplified form, you can see our sum is from negative infinity to infinity. So this accounts for negative powers. We don't need to have a whole separate sum to account for the negative powers. And this is incredibly important and incredibly useful also to specify our domain. And in physics, I understand that we never really think of this too much, but specifying our domains in complex analysis or for complex functions is incredibly important and is incredibly useful. Let's say all of a sudden we want to, uh, you know, apply this with an integral or a derivative or do, some, do, do something with this function. We need to know that we can't evaluate this or that this is not going to work at zero or at infinity or you know as we take the limit to infinity rather it only is going to work for mod z greater than zero but less than infinity where this is going to converge and this example is seen like i said all across the internet and in many different complex analysis textbooks because it is incredibly useful in explaining and understanding residues which we'll talk about hopefully next time so that'll do it for this video if you have any questions feel free to let me know in the comment section down below and thank you very much for watching. Your viewership supports this work, this channel, and this video, and I really do appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see you again next time. Thanks again.